Today we're going to be talking about the Friar, which is uh, the first specialization we're showing off for Crossroads. We're very excited about it. The Friar is, uh, as you know, if you've seen the story, if you've seen uh, some of the reveals we've had, they are jolly, they love to drink, uh, and they also worship uh, the Lady, which is the goddess that the people in Calbria worship. Um, you know, if you've ever seen the animated Robin Hood or know anything about the Robin Hood story, he's pretty clearly analogous to uh, Friar Tuck. Um, and we wanted people to be able to play as that kind of character. You know, kind of a, a bit chubby, older guy, but got a lot of spunk, uh, much quicker on his feet than people would expect him to be. Um, and we represent that in a lot of different ways, and we're going to be showing you their ultimate card. Uh, we're going to be showing you some of the cards uh, in their deck. We're going to be showing you their miniature in action. We're going to show you their health tracker. And we're also going to play a game with them to just kind of give you an idea of what they're like. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, to, to start, let's, um, I guess, talk uh, really briefly about um, one of the mechanics that Fire's built around. For those of you who missed last stream, um, Friar is building off of the, of Peasant as a base class, and one of Peasant's core mechanics is Luck. Yes. So, I feel like last stream we didn't do a great job of explaining it, yes. but let, let's talk about Luck. Sure. So, um, in Crossroads, some card effects will give you Luck, in which case you gain a Luck token, which Aislinn has shown on the screen, um, and you just put it in front of you, kind of just like an action or a power or something. You can have up to five at once. Um, and you can use these luck tokens when somebody plays a card against you. Um, instead of responding to a card with an instant, you can respond to a card targeting you by flipping a luck token instead. And um, whether what it does depends on what side you flip. It's either a clover or it's a rooster. Um, if you flip a clover, you gain a power. And then their card goes through and you get hit by it. But if you flip a rooster... They have to pay an extra resource, or their card fizzles. It goes to the discard, and um, they get their resources back. So, basically, it's this little nebulous, uh, small bit of interaction and advantage that um, peasants can mess around with. Yeah. And Friar gets to do some pretty fun stuff with it. Yeah. Uh, so, I think it's... Um, it's time to talk about their ultimate. What is Friar doing um, that yes. makes luck special? Yeah, so, you know, peasants get their luck. Other classes have luck as well. Uh, and they get to do some fancy things with it, but Friars are really the one that reinforce it and double down on it. So the Friar's ultimate is good spirits. So after you flip a luck token, you put it on good spirits. So, you know, you gain a luck token by playing a card. It goes into your pool, like, in front of you. And then after you flip that, in the way that Aaron had described previously, it goes onto the Good Spirits Ultimate itself. So you just straight up, like, put it on Good Spirits like that. Um, so, when it's on Good Spirits, if you would take or deal damage at any point, you instead take less damage equal to the total number of Clovers you have on Good Spirits, or deal more damage equal to the total number of roosters you have on good spirits, then you remove that type. So if you, you know, like we flip, okay, we got a clover, we put a clover on good spirits, we flip again. Oh, we got a rooster. Okay, so the next attack we're gonna play is gonna deal. Uh, excuse me, really quick, uh, Aislinn, yeah. you have listed in the uh, story that it is the peasant reveal, and not the friar reveal. I'm sorry, what story? Uh, in the Kickstarter campaign page. Oh. Uh, it says Fry Reveal at the top to me. Oh, I, it could just be that, that my thing isn't updating. Oh, yeah, no, it, I, I see what's happening. All right. Anyway. Okay, I just, uh, I think I just lowered Aaron's volume. Oh, am I too loud? You are pretty loud. Let me know if that helped at all. Thank you for pointing that out, Bannerman. Um, okay. Anyway, so back to this. So we 
We flipped a clover and a luck, so those went on to good spirits. Uh, the next time that damage would be dealt to us as the friar, we're just going to straight up take one less and remove the clover. And then at that point, it doesn't become a luck again. You you used it. It's done. Uh, but it's basically a second use for the token that friars get. And the same is true with damage uh, for the rooster. So, you know, if we played an attack that did five, we'd get to consume that token and instead deal six. Uh, and this is just a really nice kind of passive bonus that the friars get that makes them feel tankier, uh, makes them hit harder when people don't expect uh, them to. And the funny thing about them is that they only have 36 hit points. So, you know, by traditional character standards, that's on the weaker side in terms of HP. You would expect them to be fragile, but they end up not being that fragile because they're getting all this, all this damage reduction uh, from their clovers on top of the resource tax that they're getting with the luck tokens in the first place. So they're very deceptively powerful, very deceptively defensive in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And um, when you play them, you really feel that luck going just a little bit further, and it ends up feeling very good. Uh, I'll talk more about the inspirations for Friar in my my dive later today, where I'm going to just write up and talk about some of the stuff we talked here about, and um, just a little bit of the history of how we got to this, because, um, spoiler alert, making a Friar character uh, ended up being one of the hardest specializations for Aislinn and I to design. Um, and it's not particularly close, would you say, Aislinn? No, it was very challenging, because they're just so mundane right like mm -hmm. everyone every other character has so many like fantastical elements to them a lot of like pop culture references a lot of different inspirations you can take from to make a really cool fighting style but the friar is much it's it's just so simple you don't really see very many examples where friars are actually fighting people so we kind of mm -hmm. had to take inspiration from a lot of different places and create our own mishmash of a character and translating that into Ivian mechanics definitely took a while, but we are really happy with where it ended up. So let's take a look at some uh, some cards. Do you wanna do you wanna take turns picking cards and just go through five or? Sure, yeah, but really quick, uh, Bearman asked, is there a max to what good spirits can hold? Oh, great question. So actually, yes, um, because the game because of the rule of five, uh, no card can have more than five of a token on it. So the most you could have on good spirits would be five rooster and five clover. However, because most of the time you're flipping clovers in response to somebody playing a card against you, almost always the clover you put on good spirits is instantly absorbed. I don't think I have seen, like, I don't think I've ever seen three clovers on good spirits. So. Yeah, it usually gets removed pretty quickly, which is good for you because that means you're blocking damage, but also I guess kind of bad for you because it means you're taking damage, but <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I, it actually makes me want to point something out really quick. Like something that's really cool is if uh, your opponent plays an attack card against you and you flip and you get clover, you gain a power and then immediately get to put it on good spirits, which immediately blocks the damage one damage of that attack card so flipping yep. a luck can sometimes just give you damage prevention that you didn't have before which is pretty cool um but yeah let's go through some cards we have good spirits we see that you know luck matters let's see why what do i want to show off first you know let's show off like one of their most basic cards here let's talk about drink so this is a really important card for the Friars. Uh, it gives them a luck, which they, you know, really need, obviously, based on what their ultimate does. Um, it's a minus one plus two, which is already a pretty good cost, especially because it gives you a luck. Um, but for each power and luck token that you'd gain past your max, and remember that both of those have a max of five, you also gain an initiative token. So the idea here is that the Friar is overindulging you know, if you already have five power uh, and five luck tokens, you're going to gain three initiatives from this card. Granted, having both five power and five luck tokens is not going to happen very often. But if you do, you're going to be in a really good spot. You're going to be super drunk and you're going to be feeling great. Absolutely. This card is a 
very, very solid inclusion. Um, it is a great luck generator, and just rangeless power generation is always something you want, I don't know, at least 10 slots of your deck to go into. Um, so having this is just, it. it is oftentimes, it's never quite as, like, it's not strictly better than Manifold from Wizard, um, but it does a pretty good impression and is oftentimes much better because that that luck is essentially like you can think of this as a minus one plus three almost yeah for sure especially you know combined with the good spirits ultimate like that luck is always going to get you more on top of the normal luck effect as well which is really cool um i would love to show parable yes let's so, show parable you are, you're pulling that out um one of the things Good Spirit says is anytime you flip luck, you get to put that on there. Well, there are actually a couple ways in the game to uh, flip luck in different ways. And this is one of the really fun things and things I'm really excited about about Friar is cards like Parable. Yeah. So Parable says that the minus one plus one draw a card, then you can flip luck. If you flip a Clover... You get an extra two power. That's a minus one plus three draw card, which is an insane amount of value. Yep. Or, if you flip Rooster, you silence three each opponent. That is a... What? It's a rangeless chastise without any downsides. Like, minus one plus one draw card, silence three each opponent is also an insane value. One of the really <laughs> fun things we get to do with Friar is we get to make these cards where both sides, both possibilities are super pushed and super high value and they get to be balanced because you don't get to control which one you're getting yeah. um and so they, they also cost luck and so this ends up being a really fun outlet for them and then of course that luck that you flipped on your turn then gets to go right on good spirits and it gets to contribute towards damage reduction or extra damage in the future yeah um, it's important to note like um that's i'm glad you mentioned that because um it doesn't matter how you flip a luck. Uh, Any time you flip a luck, whether it was as a reaction or by flipping a luck via parable or, you know, by flipping an extra luck from the supply via happy days, if you saw that peasant card, all of those go on to good spirits, um, which can really work in your favor as a friar. Absolutely. So... There are a couple of really fun versions of this sort of effect. Actually, is it is it just the is it just the two now? Is it is it Thwack and Parable? Yeah, Thwack and Parable. Yeah, okay. Those are fantastic, really fun cards. Um, sure. What would you like to show next? I'm not sure. Let me look. Oh yes. Okay. Let's do Prey. Let's look at another oh. defensive option for uh, the Friar. I know that there were some people who were excited about seeing this card, so this one's for you guys. So Prey, as people astutely okay, noted, uh, this is an instant card that doesn't have any uh, like icons on it, which is interesting. It would make you think it's a counter, but it's not. Uh, it simply makes the next card that resolves targeting you deal four less damage and apply no tokens. So the thing is, is that card still resolves. So let's say they play uh, a card that hits you for six damage and silences you too. Prey is going to allow that card to resolve still. So they still have to spend those resources and they lose the card. But it's only going to deal two damage and apply no silence to you at all. Which, you know, effectively nullifies their card, especially if you have clovers on your good spirits, because both of those damage reduction effects can be combined. So if you if they played a card that dealt six, you prayed to reduce it by four, and then on top of that you had two clovers on good spirits, it would deal no damage to you whatsoever. So this yeah. is a really uh, good way for Friars to come out of nowhere and just, like, just not die. <laughs> and... Reducing the damage by four might not seem like a huge amount, but it really adds up, especially with the passive uh, taxation from luck and DR from the extra clovers. Some... Yeah, um, one of the things that you yeah. should look for when you're looking at a new specialization is anything that's instant and heroic is, instant, is <laughs> instantly worth considering and looking at, and Prey is no exception. 
I mean, if somebody plays a justice against you and you res you pray in response, they just spent minus two, minus two to warrior strike. Um, yeah. Because you just blocked four control and four damage. Pray is really, it's an excellent effect in a game that is so focused on combat math and trying to get to exact values. Messing those up can, um, well, it can save your life. Yeah. I have tried to defeat many a friar only for them to have like two preys in their hand and just <laughs> not been able to get there. Yeah. And if you want, you can also use it aggressively, like if it makes sense. Like um, if you have like a really big attack card you want to play, for instance, Wallop, which we'll be showing off soon, um, and someone tries to, uh, you know, disrupt you by playing something that applies control to you at instant speed. You can pray, and it won't. That control won't hit you, and then your attack will go through anyway. So it's also pretty versatile in that way. Uh, well, I'm trying to think about whether I want to show. I want to show stumble, and I want to show belfry. Sure. Uh, I don't know which one. Let's do belfry. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's take a look in a, in a fun little direction. Yeah. So, uh, since Friar Friars parent class is peasant one of the things that we want to support in friar one of our design goals is to have a attach card payoff um that you can that you can build and you can toil out with peasants so free you know quick tutor and so what we have is a really fun style of friar deck in belfry so this card it attaches to a tile just like a normal tile modifier for minus two plus two then once per turn, you can spend an initiative to ring that bell. If you're near the Belfry, you can spend your initiative, put a charge counter on Belfry. Then, Belfry does two damage to each opponent um, within two tiles uh, for each charge counter on it. So the first time it does two, then it does four, then it does six. Um, yep. And also, it stuns them. That on bell top of that, just gets so loud. What's up? The oh, bell, yeah, it just gets, it, they're just too loud. It hurts. <laughs> On top of that, if you have multiple belfries out, you can ring them both. If you have two initiatives, you can ring both belfries, and then you've dealt, you know, two and then four, because each belfry does damage based on the charge counters in all belfries. So this ends up becoming a really neat build around yeah. where a friar deck wants to run up to the middle of the, de of the board and just start plopping belfries and using initiative, you know, drinking a bunch to get the initiatives they need to keep ringing those bells. For sure. And it's a pretty frenetic, crazy deck that requires a lot of finagling to protect your belfries, but it it works pretty well. We're very happy with it. For sure. I mean, everyone knows that you need to drink alcohol in order to power up enough to ring the belfries, right? Because it's true. drink gives you the, potentially gives you the initiatives, the extra initiatives you need to ring that bell. <laughs> but yeah, cool. So. Wallop? Yes. Let's pull out the wallop. So this is Friar's big haymaker. We saw this art in the Friar story yesterday. It is a huge minus two, minus three, which is already a massive cost for an attack, especially in a specialization. This card needs to be really good to be worth running. Luckily, it is. Uh, it has reach, so it's range one, but it can extend quite a bit further. Uh, and it hits for 11, not bad. But then you attach to them until your next turn. Their cards cost an additional resource to play, so you knock them so silly that they just can't even think straight for the next turn. Uh, Every single one of their cards costing one more resource on their next turn is a huge tax, especially if you combine that with the fact that you probably have luck just sitting there waiting to potentially tax them even tax further. Them even further. Yeah. It can be absolutely brutal to deal with a wallop. So if you can pull this off and hit your opponent with it, not only does it does uh, not only does it do excellent damage, but it also really makes their next turn go pretty haywire. And one of the crazy things about that, um, one of the things I noticed with Wallop, I kind of thought it was basically, oh, minus two, minus three, they're just not going to do anything on their turn. But that's not actually how it plays out, because in Ivian, if you don't do anything on a turn, you just might die the next one. So people have to play cards, and they're just paying through the nose 
So I found Wallop has been really good at depleting somebody's excess power reserves, which is great because then it makes them way more susceptible to control. Um, because having having a large amount of power is one of the best things you can do in it. And Wallop makes that extremely hard. For sure. For sure. All right, what do you want to show? Fire's collecting for the poor box. Absolutely, you gotta play. You gotta pay the, gotta pay the tithe. Yep. Oh yeah, for sure. Like this is an excellent example of the aesthetic and theme of Friar coming through, and that you know they're dodging these attacks in ways that you're not expecting, which is represented by luck. Uh, and then they're just coming out of nowhere and using this dinky little quarter staff to just end your whole career right <laughs> that's their thing all right what do you want to show off Aaron? oh god i mean i want to show them off but uh <laughs> do we want to want to finish it on stumble or bless let's do bless i think bless is a cool card that has a lot of outside uh yeah. stuff going on so if we want to talk about um Designing cards that are supposed to be above rate. This is it. This is your boy. This stunty little man <laughs> is blessing the next card you play and is contributing two actions towards it. Um, this card is incredible. Yes. It's card, it's card disadvantage, so you're going to need to cover that. But what it is is a massive action. Um, advantage that you can't really find anywhere else. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, obviously this card is best used uh, with cards that cost two actions. You're probably not going to want to use this if you have a card that only costs one action. So, you know, if you're looking at, like, uh, we've seen Belfry, so you can bless out a Belfry, uh, and that makes it cost effectively two power instead. Or you can bless out a wallop, which is pretty expensive. You know, at that point, you're paying five total power to make that happen. But actions are so valuable in Avian. Uh, so the fact that bless helps you save them is is huge. And like, obviously, this card has a lot of implications outside of Friar because you're going to be able to take class cards that cost two actions and make them cost no actions, which is really big. You can build a deck around this card as well. It is it is a free bell free. It is incredible resource advantage. It's also heroic and gives you a luck. So it's it's just uh, it's cracked. We're really happy with it, and it's been playing very well. Um, For sure. And I'll, I'll go into more into like how can we get away with bless in the article. Um, we this was not the first version of this card that we landed on. Is the short answer. That's true. Cool. Yeah. So I think we are going to probably transition here to playing uh, a game with the Friar. There are so still... are we going to be stopping the stream real quick? Or... No, we don't even have to stop the stream. We can just keep oh, going. Great. I'm just going to pause the recording and then uh, restart it so it's another video. Um, but anyways, there are some more Friar cards we haven't shown. You might see some of the other ones in our game here. Plus, we're going to upload... Um, all the cards to Tabletop Simulator and the website today so that you can take a look and maybe build your own decks. So let's move on. Actually, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. So let me 